California and the laws around guns and assault weapons is something that's commonly confused or mistaken or misinterpreted. Regardless of where you stand on the issue of either being pro-gun or anti-gun, I think it's important to understand what it is you're talking about and the intricacies of the laws that are currently in place so that you know what argument you're making and that it's based on sound information of what you're talking about. Because if I'm talking about this and you're talking about that and we're arguing, what's the point? Because we don't even know what's going on. Today, we're talking about the California assault weapon ban. This is going to be relevant to some other states, but it's going to be mostly just relevant to California and people that are confused or curious about what is an assault weapon in the state of California and what isn't. I'm going to start by talking about what an assault weapon is and what are some examples of guns that are not assault weapons. At times, I may infuse my opinion. I'm going to do my best to avoid confusing you as far as what's a fact and what's an opinion or what my interpretation is. So we're going to start with the difference between assault rifle and assault weapon because this is something that's commonly confused. Now an assault rifle is a select fire, meaning safe, semi-auto, or fully automatic. Semi-auto meaning one pull of the trigger, one round fires. You have to let the trigger off and pull again. Full auto means that you pull that trigger down and it will fire until rounds are no longer able to be fed into the gun. That is what a select fire assault rifle is. Now, an assault weapon is a term that was coined back in the 1990s to create a classification of firearm that they wanted to ban. So an assault weapon. In California, there are two types of assault weapons. There are the assault weapons that are banned by name. Now, an assault weapon that banned by name was originally listed on the Roberti Ruse list and the secondary AK and AR Castler versus Locklear assault weapon list. I'll leave links to those in the description and down in the comments below so that you can look through. For the most part, that's going to be irrelevant. So when they banned them by name on the Roberti Ruse and the Castler versus Locklear assault weapon list, it was very specific down to the make and the model of the gun. If anything changed in the naming or the manufacturer of that, it was not banned. So for example, the Armalite model M15, all of those were banned. The Armalite model AR10, all of those were banned. The Colt Law Enforcement 6920 and the Match Target, the AR15 and the Sporter all banned. The way around this was the manufacturers just basically changed the, the name of the gun. So while the DPMS had the Panther series that was removed, now they have the Oracle series and all kinds of other manufacturers just decided, okay, we're just going to kill that name, add a new one. It's not banned anymore because they were specific to the make and model of the gun. They didn't like this. So there is a second category of an assault weapon, and this is based on the physical characteristics of the gun. So that gun, depending on what type it is, depending on if it's a rifle, pistol, or shotgun, it's going to have different characteristics that it would be considered an assault weapon due to. So we're going to start with the most common one, the one that people want to know, a rifle or a carbine. So what is a rifle? A rifle is basically any firearm that is designed to fire from the shoulder like this, pop, 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 or whatever it is, pop, bolt action. Basically, it's a gun that's designed to be fired with two hands and shouldered, meaning that you put the butt of the gun into your shoulder here. So rifles, what are the characteristics of an assault weapon for a rifle? Now let's get into that. I'm going to list the actual descriptions and have the text in the description, links to it all in the bio and whatnot and then also off to the side of the screen here. So I'm just gonna shift up. A semi-auto center fire rifle that has the capacity to accept a detachable magazine and any one of the following characteristics. Now you notice there that it said semi-auto center fire rifle with a detachable mag. If it's rimfire, doesn't fit. If it's bolt action, lever action, or anything other than semi-automatic, doesn't fit this category. If it has a fixed magazine, meaning that you have to disassemble the action in order to take the magazine out, does not fit this category. So if you have a gun that is a semi-auto centerfire rifle with detachable magazines and any of the following features, it's going to be banned due to the characteristics of the gun. So if it has a pistol grip, a pistol grip that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the weapon, 
basically meaning that if the rifle is be able to be held like this with the grip going down into it and you shoulder it bop 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 that's an evil feature and you might hear me say evil feature more on later if it has a thumb hole stock meaning a stock that you put your thumb through and grab similar to a pistol grip but just slightly different a folding or telescoping stock now folding means that it physically moves onto the side of the gun telescoping means that it is basically an adjustable stock that slides forward or towards the gun or away from the gun so that you can have a different length of pull for different height people so if you're short you can shoot this gun hand it to someone that's real tall like me and then i have a length of pull that's comfortable for me still on the same gun <laughs> d a grenade launcher or flare launcher now i really doubt any of you have a grenade launcher or flare launcher but if you put that on your gun that is a semi-auto center fire with detachable magazines you got yourself an assault weapon who to thunk a flash suppressor now a flash suppressor is going to be different than a muzzle brake or a compensator muzzle brakes and compensators are not listed on here as you see but a flash suppressor is Muzzle brakes and compensators are designed to reduce the felt recoil and the muzzle rise of the gun, making them flatter shooting and have less recoil. A flash suppressor is designed to reduce the flash signature of the gun. A flash suppressor is considered a flash suppressor if it's called one by the manufacturer or if it has the physical characteristics of one. So whether or not your flash suppressor actually does reduce the flash compared to a bare muzzle, if the manufacturer says that it does, Air on the side of caution, that's considered an assault weapon feature. A forward pistol grip. Now, forget about the ATF rules on angled versus vertical grips. California considers a forward pistol grip. Same definition, being able to grab it with a pistol style grasp on the forward end of the gun, allowing you to grab it with two hands like this. That was just for semi-auto centerfire rifles with a detachable magazine. Now for a semi-auto centerfire rifle with a fixed magazine, if you have more than 10 rounds in the gun, it's an assault weapon. So if you have a fixed magazine gun that holds 11 rounds or more, that's considered an assault weapon. That's why we currently can't use our large capacity magazines that we can legally own in our fixed mag guns. More on that up here. The third type of rifle that would be considered an assault weapon is if the overall length of it on a semi-auto center fire rifle, so any semi-auto that is center fire, regardless of the magazine type, that has an overall length of less than 30 inches. The feds define an SBR as a rifle with an overall length less than 26 inches, as far as I'm aware. California measures it at 30 inches from the shortest fireable configuration. Now we're moving on to the pistol category. Pistols include both normal things like a Glock or AR-15 pistols. So it's something to keep in mind that the features might be different on these two types of pistol. So for a semi-auto pistol that has the capacity to accept a detachable magazine and any one of the following, again, even if you only have one of these features, it's an assault weapon. If it has a threaded barrel capable of accepting a flash suppressor, forward hand grip, or silencer. The second part of this sentence, kind of irrelevant because the main point is if it has a threaded barrel on a semi-auto pistol with detachable mags, assault weapon. If it has a second hand grip, so things like the Micro Roni kits um, or just putting a foregrip on your Glock or whatever, that's going to be considered an assault weapon, regardless of whether or not the ATF says that within whatever characteristics it's legal, the state defines that as an assault weapon if you don't have a fixed magazine. Now, the barrel shroud, a shroud that is attached to or partially or completely encircles the barrel that allows the bearer of the fire to fire the weapon without burning their hand except a slide that encloses the barrel. So let me show you an example real quick. This is a standard semi-auto pistol. This is the slide of the gun. This is the part that reciprocates back and forth every time you fire. This is not considered a barrel shroud. Now, just for demonstration's sake, let's say on this gun here, it was a short barrel without a stock and was considered a pistol. This here, the handguard, would be considered a barrel shroud because it partially or completely encircles the barrel, allowing me to grab it without burning my hand. So this would be an evil feature. Now, the hardest part about pistols and the assault weapon laws that surround them in California is definitely going to be D, the capacity to accept a detachable magazine at some location outside of the pistol grip. 
So where you grab the gun and where you shoot, boom, boom, boom. If the magazine goes in anywhere other than there, that's considered an assault weapon if it's detachable. So you'll see with AR-15 pistols, typically break action, fixed magazine, that's how you get around that. Now, a semi-auto pistol with a fixed magazine that has the capacity to accept more than 10 rounds. So same thing with the rifles. If you have a pistol that's semi-auto and the magazine is able to accept more than 10 rounds, even if you have to break the action open and disassemble the gun, if it's 11 rounds or more, it's an assault weapon. So now that we covered rifles and pistols, we're going to move on to shotguns. Now, a semi-auto shotgun that has both of the following. Now, you're going to notice that I said both. Many people get this confused and think that if you have either one on a semi-auto shotgun, that is an assault weapon. No, you need to have both of them in order to be considered an assault weapon. If it has a folding or telescoping stock, so again, a stock that is adjustable or folding, and a pistol grip that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the weapon, a thumb hole stop, stock, or a vertical hand grip. So if you have a collapsible stock and a pistol grip or a thumb hole stock or a vertical hand grip, that's considered an assault weapon on a semi-auto shotgun. Not on a pump action, not on a lever action, not on a brake action, on a semi-auto shotgun. Those are the two features you got to worry about. A specific gun that comes to mind is one of the Benelli M4s has a single point of adjustment and a pistol grip. Can't have that. Fixed stock with a pistol grip can have that. Now with shotguns, there's two other types. If it's a shotgun that has detachable magazines, can't have that. Now if it's a fixed magazine that requires you to disassemble the action to remove, right on. If it's a shotgun with a revolving cylinder, can't have that. Now this is typically going to be like that street sweeper style that was popular back in the 80s, or the Taurus Judge is also considered a shotgun with revolving cylinder because it specifically says that it is designed to fire a 410 shotgun shell. Guns that are chambered in 45 long colt that also happen to have the ability to chamber 410, not really considered an assault weapon, but a gun that is designed to fire 410 and has a revolving cylinder, that's an assault weapon, unfortunately. Now, the thing about these laws is this was intended federally to end in 2004. I think it was 1999 or 1994 to 2004, and then it was supposed to lapse. California enacted these feature-based laws back in 2000. So they started their own, and ever since then, it's been the same thing. So now that we got the definition of what an assault weapon is for rifles, pistols, and shotguns, we're going to talk about some guns that you might initially think, how is that not an assault weapon? We're going to talk about featureless firearms and fixed magazine firearms, okay? So, starting with rifles. This gun here is my Ruger PC carbine. This gun is semi-auto, meaning every time I pull the trigger, it fires around, with detachable magazines, and it's center fire. But it's not considered an assault weapon because... You'll notice that it has none of the features that would make it considered an assault weapon. Fixed stock, no pistol grip, no vertical foregrip, no grenade launcher or flare launcher. And now this has a threaded barrel, which is fine on rifles. However, I do not have a flash suppressor installed. I could put a muzzle brake or a compensator. I'm not gonna, this is nine millimeter, rifle, sh rifle shoots just soft enough. Here is an example of an AR-15 that I have converted to be featureless. This gun looks very similar to every other AR-15 on the market, but it's California legal with detachable magazines that I just press this button, magazine comes out. This gun looks kind of assault, assault weapony, but this stock is fixed in place. It does not adjust, it does not fold, it does not telescope, and it is not a thumb hole stock. This grip here is not considered a pistol grip because the only part where I can wrap my thumb around is above the exposed portion of the action, being the trigger right here. If I could wrap my thumb around down here and fire the gun, that would be considered a pistol grip. But since I can only wrap my thumb around above the exposed portion of the action, not a pistol grip. This muzzle device on it right here is a muzzle brake. And you might ask yourself, 
that looks like a normal muzzle device. Well, it is. Muzzle brakes and compensators, because this law was written back in the 90s, they weren't that common back then, and they wanted to write a law that defined what AR-15s looked like back then. As things changed, muzzle brakes and compensators became more common, but they did not update the laws to fit the new common standard. This gun does not have a vertical foregrip. It does not have a forward pistol grip. This gun is not an assault weapon. I can use my 30 round magazines in this just fine. All in all, I really like it. It's a great option. If you want to know more about this gun, I got a video up here. Let's say, for example, that this gun had all of the features, that it had a pistol grip, that it had a collapsible stock, had a flash hider, vertical pistol grip in the front, grenade launcher or flare launcher on the front, had all the features. That would be fine if the magazine required you to disassemble the action in order to remove it. So what that would mean on a typical AR-15, the easiest way to do that is you pop this rear pin, open that up, drop the magazine, close the action, pop the pin, put a new magazine in, rack it, and then you're ready to go. Now, fixed magazine is something that's gonna change what it means based on the type of gun and the action of the gun. There's a lot of great options out there. I've talked about the cross armory kits, the bear flag defense, all kinds of other types. I'll maybe put a link up here to some of those videos that I've made in the past. So if we look at the features on a pistol versus a rifle, rifle, all of those we can do. If we wanted to make this gun, so if this gun was a pistol and we wanted to make it California compliant through a featureless method, Let's look at what we would have to get rid of. This threaded barrel would have to go, meaning that I would have to pin and weld this muzzle device on, or I would have to cut the barrel. Barrel shroud, ooh, okay. So the barrel shroud on this gun, this gun would not be very easy to fire if I couldn't grab up here on the barrel shroud that partially or completely encircles the action of the firearm or the barrel. Now, as long as there's no second hand grip, so this would be the first, let's say, let's. For example, just pretend this was a pistol grip for now. It's not, I know it's not. So I can grip it here, a second hand grip. Let's say I had a grip just sticking right up here. Not legal, take that off, that's easy. Just don't put a second grip on it. The capacity to accept a detachable magazine somewhere outside of the pistol grip. Yikes, how are we gonna get around that? Now with guns like these, like the AR-15s, the AKs. With guns that accept a magazine outside the grip, that's pretty hard to get around. There's no way that I could use this gun like this um, and consider this the pistol grip. So that's not really a feature we can get around. So featureless with a pistol, not an option. Fixed mag is basically the only way to go for a pistol, meaning popping the pin, dropping the mag, closing the action, popping the pin, new mag in, rack it. Now there's a lot of great options out there to make that a faster process, but you're basically doing the goddamn Macarena. I'm not a real big fan of that. Shotguns. Unfortunately with shotguns, if you wanna have a detachable magazine in it, you're gonna have to go fixed mag. That's really the only other way. There's no way around the dual feature with the telescoping or folding stock and the pistol grip. There's really no way around that other than not having one of the features. So if you have an adjustable stock but no pistol grip, that's fine. If you have a pistol grip, but no folding or telescoping stock, that's fine. Have both of them, no good. So now that we've covered what an assault weapon is, I kind of just want to wrap up real quickly. Um, whether or not you agree or disagree with assault weapon bans, that's beside the point. I just wanted to make sure that we all have our facts straight, get the information as easily as possible. I'm gonna leave some links that are helpful below. So if you want to look at this stuff in more depth, you can. If you have any questions, leave a comment. If you have anything that you want to say, leave a comment as well. Drop a like, whatever it is that YouTubers are saying to do nowadays. I hope you have a great day. Hope this was helpful more than anything. Peace.